This is a phrase that I've used a lot in my adult life. I first used it as a gut reaction to an interview question when I was asked, how do you approach work? Since then, it's become a little bit of a mantra that I use to center myself in times of kind of craziness. For me, it means two things. First, it means to approach life with an open mind, one that doesn't focus on preconceptions or expectations, but allows for all options to be, be available. In Buddhism, this is referred to as a beginner's mind. By keeping an open mind and an eagerness to learn, all options are on the table. The second is to embrace, embrace the grayness of the world. I don't spend a lot of time trying to find black and white answers, but instead choose the grayness that's right for me and I move on. What I didn't know when I first uttered that statement was that I was also beginning to learn and practice a way of thinking called design thinking. Design thinking combines creativity and executional expertise to deliver a solution for a human need that is both technologically feasible and viable for a business strategy. When done right, it solves both a human and a business problem. Now this thinking came naturally to me. I grew up in a small rural town, and, and for a while I grew up in a household that had four generations. For me as an only child, that meant three generations of mothers. <laughs> there were a few points of view and uh, they didn't often agree. So I, I learned very early to, to navigate that, that minefield. Beyond our house, there were also family, friends, and neighbors who were also willing to take on the parent role whenever possible. If you left your yard, you were in theirs, you were their kid. So what my village taught me was to take everyone's point of view and try to understand it before making any judgments or jump to conclusions. They also taught me that when people are involved, seldom is anything black and white. My family provided a very safe place for me to learn, to dream, and to try new things. I got to learn about baking and auto repair, handicraft, working with tools. I got to learn about arts and sciences. But most of all, he let me explore my own philosophies and my own religion. And he gave me a great base to, to learn more in the future. Several years later, I would step into a career of shopper marketing. Shopper marketing is the focused study and practice of marketing to an individual when they're in the, mo the mode of shopping. This goes beyond signage and incentives, but focuses on all the elements that are related to the shopping experience. If you've been in a store, people are talking to you. So as my career went, went on, I got to work with some of the greats of shopper marketing. I don't know if you know this guy, but uh, and I'm not supposed to say it, but he's, he's the CEO of Kris Kringle Industries. Sold a lot of toys. Uh, he's, he's moved more toys than all the other big guys. In all honesty, I, I really did get to work with some of the largest, fastest moving retailers, agencies, and suppliers in the world. I got to meet with CEOs and CEOs, and I got to be in their boardrooms and making decisions with them. <clears throat> I continued throughout my career to push myself to learn everything I could about shopper marketing and the related fields. Harry Potter removed from my nightstand, got replaced with why we buy and the complexity of um, other books that were related to, to things as little as shopping and, and how you navigate those areas. I was looking for this simple formula as a holy grail that would either get me to the corner office or to make my day a little bit easier. What I really found was what I knew from a child and that was when people are involved, things are seldom simple. So one of the opportunities I had 
uh, in Shopper Marketing was to run a team that was focused on the physical experience of, of brand in store. We did everything from packaging to displays, from shelf signs to whole category rede redesigns, as well as sometimes designing whole stores. It was a lot of fun. We got to work with major retailers across the country, and we did a lot of great work. I got to work with a really great team, and we really made a difference in a lot of shopping situations. We tried to make everything better whenever possible. But I was growing frustrated. I had, I had still not found the formula I was looking for, and the pressures of shopper marketing were getting harder and harder. Failure was not an option, and I kept pushing my team harder and harder, and I was looking for a mechanicalized perfection that's not possible with humans. I was making myself miserable, and I was making other people miserable. And not even a stay in the hospital could slow me down for very long. And then I realized I had stopped thinking with an open mind. I had stopped bringing the beginner's mind to the table and looking for options. And I was an expert. I knew the answers before the questions were asked, and I expected people to do what I needed them to do. No questions asked. Even by Gladwellian math, with 40,000 hours of shopper marketing experience, I was the expert. They should listen to me and just do what I say. It was time to make a change. And for me, that change started one morning when I was about to cross the border into Canada for a three-month project in, in Toronto. My wife called to say good morning and wish me well and told me that we might be expanding our family. <sighs> At the age of 40, when someone says expanding and family, it usually means you're signing up for a gym membership. <laughs> or at least you're going to need to get new pants. Uh, in some cases, it means your mother-in-law is coming to live with you. For me, it meant I was going to be a father. I didn't know anything about that. I knew everything about all these things. I was sure I knew what to do, but I didn't know how to be a father. So to be fair, I had, in shopper marketing, I had spent a lot of time around baby products. I had done, I had once actually won an award for a, a display in a program that sold more diapers over a period of time than, than ever before. It was both the hugest business case study I ever had and the worst design project I ever did. It was effective, but not very exciting. I was going to have to learn about a new world. I was going to have to learn the needs of a baby, the needs of an expecting mother, and how to be a father. And I was also going to have to navigate a new world of pink and frilliness that I had no idea how to do. So I started questioning. After all these years of working on products related to parents and going into these meetings and standing up for, for solutions, did I really not understand what a parent meant? Did I not know how to be a father? Did I not understand a father? And then I realized there's some things that you can't learn from a PowerPoint or even a brief, however well-intentioned. So I started to question myself, are there other things that I don't understand? Are there things that I think I know, but I don't truly understand? So I made a change. I left a great job. I was well-respected. I had a great team, but I needed something different. I started working with smaller companies, nonprofits, startups, and even individuals that were trying to new, new things. I learned as much from them as they could ever learn from me. And then I started to realize the true solutions come from when you combine the beginner's mind with the mind of an expert. And it really made a difference for me. It allowed me to be in both worlds and not throw away the expertise. Because the, the great thing about acquiring a certain amount of knowledge is it makes it a lot easier to connect the dots between things. 
But if you only think from that point of view, you cut yourself off to a lot of options. So if you just want to learn about other people or, or look for that competitive advantage, I encourage you to do these four things. Approach life with an open mind that lets everything be at the table before making a decision. Provide a safe environment for your staff, your family, and your friends to provide ideas and test new ideas. To look at different problems with points of view that allow you to define those problems creatively before you look for a creative solution and ask the tough questions and be willing to hear those answers. Sometimes the problem is not a marketing problem. Sometimes it's a product problem. It doesn't make it easy, but if you can solve that, you'll win. So as I move into my <laughs> new adventure, I've promised myself and my family to push to, to keep these things in mind. And the one thing I do know is that my, my daughter will do everything she can to remind me that I don't know everything. Thank you. <laughs>